before we start building this, let's first address some errors I made in the last video. For example, I complained that some of the nodes in the material library were not available in this USD material X subnet. And you were quick to point out that I was using the wrong subnet here and instead should have used the Karma material X subnet, which hides here. And if I drop down that and use that for my material building in here, for example, I can find the sought after Karma ray import and a bunch of other useful nodes used to build materials for Houdini's Karma renderer using some Houdini specific material X nodes. So the first thing I want to do here in our old setup is, well, maybe bring over our nodes from our previous setup here, which we built in the wrong subnet type. So by just selecting every single node here by control A and then copying it, control C, going into our new Karma Material X subnet here and then deleting all these nodes here and instead pasting the ones I just copied over from our previous subnet here. I now have all those nodes and thus the material rebuilt inside of the Karma Material X subnet. Let's just take this network's name here, cut it out, call this one old and then call this one here the same as our previous subnet abstract plant. And finally, what I want to do up here on the stage in the material library is select the proper material VOP. In this case, our abstract plant VOP, which in this case changes nothing, but now we are working inside of the right subnet. Okay, let's delete the old one here and that still holds up. As you maybe remember when switching over to the build context here and going to the OBJ and then into the geo node down here, you might remember that we dropped down this measure node here, which calculated this curvature here. And for this video, I want to use this custom attribute that we saved out as curvature is actually what we called it and use that for building a shader for this geometry that also employs a bit of subsurface scattering, highlighting the nice random walk subsurface scattering that Karma has built in by default. Okay, let's go back to our Solaris and switch our context here to stage and make sure we're looking through the camera and maybe pin that to the viewport so we can navigate the camera with the viewport. And the first thing I want to do is find a new camera position so I can see a bit better what's happening here. The first thing I want to do is change the camera's focal length. So by default, the camera under the view tab has this focal length set to a default value of 50. In my case, I want to increase that, make it a bit more of a telephoto lens to maybe 100 millimeters, getting a good bit closer in here. And now I'll just position the camera a bit more, I don't know, dynamic for the lack of better words, maybe something like this. And I can see the background is getting out of my image here. So let's move this around again by maybe just translating it a few units around and also just slightly rotating it. Again, values that I found out when preparing the setup. You could also just use the tool handles here to move this around in the viewport until it fits. Next, let's start building this new shader. So I want to go back into our material library here and maybe just create a new Karma Material X subnet here, which I don't know, maybe we call subsurface. And let's just apply that by going back to the stage to the material library here. And instead of selecting the abstract plant material, let's select the subsurface material here. And we can see as by default, we haven't dialed in anything on this material. We can see this white default material. Okay, let's go back into our subsurface material and start building in here. So again, as with my previous materials, I won't be needing most of those nodes. So let's delete everything but the surface and the displacement output and instead use a standard material that is a material X standard surface to dial in the surface of our geometry. And in here, the first thing I want to do is use that curvature attribute that I created and turn that into a base color here. So similarly to our UV slash ST attribute that we loaded in in our last video, I'm going to use a USD primbar reader, which I will set up to load in a float, which is called curvature. And again, we can check that on our sub import and the mesh. If we drag this over here and drag out the names, we can see that down here somewhere as a primbar, we have this curvature exported and imported again into Solaris. So we want to import this curvature and then remap this. So this value that comes out here is somewhere in the negative domain, I think minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5, something around that in the ballpark. And I want to remap that to be between zero and one. So the first thing I'll have to attach here is a material X remap, which goes in here. And as mentioned, the approximate input and output values are between minus Let's go for 0 0.6 for good measure and plus 0 0.6. And that should be remapped between zero and one because then what I can do is take a color ramp that is the material X color ramp here and use that to remap these values between zero and one in this case to be between black and white. But in our case, I want those to be somewhere, I don't know, between a yellow. So let's select a yellow here, maybe something like this. And let's have that go to a pink and then maybe to a more desaturated pink or bluish color. And we'll have to dial that in later. For now, let's select a pink reddish 
value here. I don't know, something like this maybe. And then let's go to something on the other end of the spectrum and let's desaturate and darken this quite a bit, something like this. And that's what I want to put into my base color here. And now you can see we are loading up these curvature values, then setting them up to be between zero and one, and then taking this zero to one range and remapping it to colors here. And in here in the in low and in high, I can dial in those values to make the respective colors a bit more pronounced by just simply remapping these curvature values a bit differently. Let's dial them back to our original values. I can do the same thing here in our slider. Just take note that while dragging the slider, Karma won't update, so only after we release the slider is the proper result displayed in our viewport. Again, resetting this to the original. Now let's turn this into this more organic material as from our preview artwork. And I can do that using the really simple to use Material X subsurface, which I can find under this subsurface slider here. And I'll just increase that for now, just set that to one. And you can see there is already something happening. And also take note that this is rendering on the XPU as well. So after a bit of initializing, my GPUs should start rendering as well. However, that does not look proper. That is because the subsurface scale is usually set up to be too big. So that's one unit between individual subsurface hits, simulating a very thinly scattering material. So let's make this material behave a bit more thickish, having more absorption quicker by dialing down this subsurface scale quite drastically. Let's try 0.1 and maybe also give this a color. So let's take this base color here and wire this into the subsurface color here. Let's take this one and connect it to our base color here. And we can see already something happening. So that gives this a bit of a tint, but also, and even more so, the color of the subsurface radius is what's driving how strong and how colorful the subsurface looks. And yes, we can take just a single value here and try dialing that into our liking. I don't know, maybe something like this, or maybe a bit more reddish, or we could also feel tempted to take this base color and also wire that into the subsurface radius. Let's try doing that. And after a bit of thinking, Houdini spits out this image. And in this case, that is not the proper look I want to go for. So let's dial in a few parameters here. I think I further lowered the subsurface scale to 0 0.025. And now we can see a pronounced color coming through here. Also with subsurface, it's important that to get a proper feeling for the translucency of this material, you backlight it. So you have some light coming from the back, maybe a bit more pronounced light for coming from the back. And as I'm quite lazy, all I want to do here is go back to our stage and take our dome light and just transform this, just rotate it around the Y axis until I get lighting on this subsurface material that I really like. So I'll just start turning this HDR just by 30 degrees increments so I can see what is happening and how the material is behaving. And also maybe I want to get rid of this selection outline by just clicking here. So this yellow outline here is gone. And I'll just keep on rotating this to 120, 150. And now we're getting a good bit of backlight here. Let's just rotate it further to 180 degrees. Now we are just getting this rim light here. However, it's quite dark now as we were only shooting light at it from the back. So let's increase the intensity in our dome light here on their base properties and set that to seven. Again, trial and error, that just looked nice. However, now I'm getting issues with my background because that is now getting less light as we're only backlighting it. In order to fix that and get kind of a solid look on the background, I want to tweak that material a bit by going into this material library here where we set up the background. And again, we could put that into a Karma material X node as well. I'm just going to spare that for now because all I want to do in here is take this ramp here that I created with the background colors and this color gradient. And instead of taking that into the base color here, that's this one here, wire this up to the emission color here so that we are creating a self illuminating emissive material and instead cut this base color connection here and set the base color to be black so that the only color we're getting is going to come from the emission, which we're going to set up now by clicking in the emission tab here and dialing in that emission to maybe one or maybe even a bit brighter. Let's try that out. Eh, it might be a bit too bright. Let's go with 1.2 for now, but also on the ramp, let's maybe try dialing in those parameters, maybe bringing in that yellow area a bit more. So the yellow is a bit more pronounced here and maybe also saturating it a bit more. So let's just give it a bit more saturation saturation here, making it a good bit more yellow. And let's do the same thing with the blue end here, also increasing the saturation a bit, just making this a bit more colorful, like so maybe. And now, as you can see, the subsurface material here is quite a bit noisy. So let's go down here to our comma render settings and increase our overall samples. That just means increasing these path traced samples here to maybe 1024 to allow this material 
to be hit by more samples and thus get less noisy in effect. Also under our limits we can increase our subsurface limit here for the subsurface to receive diffuse material or diffuse hits which again is going to increase our render times and which you should judge by yourself if it's necessary. So render two comparison images and flip between those and make up your own mind if you actually need that. But that really quickly is how you import a custom attribute into a comma material x subnet and use that for shading. In this case driving the subsurface scattering. And if you want to learn more about Houdini, maybe a bit of Unreal and Blender or just plainly want to support us, consider becoming a patron of ours as it's through the help of our patrons that we are able to run and tag the way we do. And for everyone already supporting us, thanks so much. With a very special thank you going out to important looking pirates, jellyfish pictures, the mill, method studios, pixonic, random 42, rodeo effects, side effects, illusion, style frame, and Rafikanadol Studio. Thanks so much. And as always, until next time, it is cheers and goodbye.